and uh, your team. Thanks for the opportunity. And thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for taking the time uh, to listen to the White Rock story. Uh, Victoria's next high-grade gold producer, you would have heard from Ian and Navar, the transition from explorer to producer is a very exciting time for any junior. Uh, many juniors don't quite get there, um, and we're, we're, we're gung-ho going at it. Uh, and that's the photo of the, uh, the mine in Victoria that I'll touch on. Uh, no, no apologies about making forward-looking statements as a junior. Uh, we, we do look forward. I'll let you read that at your leisure. Uh, this is uploaded onto our website and lodged with the ASX as is required under good corporate governance. I'm not going to read every bullet point there, um, but I will touch on uh, our Woods Point Gold project that we acquired in August last year. Uh, we've been drilling there ever since. Uh, we've got a team of 25. And equally uh, for us, the significant land package that we have in central Victoria. I'll touch a little bit on Alaska. Not a lot of people know about Alaska, uh, generally in Australia. They often think it's Grizzly Adams and Ice Road Truckers and maybe a bit of Discovery Channel. Uh, but it's a fantastic jurisdiction, even though we've got a chunk of zinc. Uh, we've got a lot of gold and silver in that asset as well, which I think is important in this conference. Uh, but not last, uh, but it is last, but not least, is our founding asset, Mount Carrington, here in New South Wales, an advanced gold and silver project. So where are we? As I mentioned, we're about 120 kilometres uh, due east of Melbourne, uh, the Woods Point Gold Project. Uh, it includes the famous Morningstar gold mine, which I'll touch on, which, which gave birth, was the forerunner to Western Mining when it was mined by GMA, a uh, significant producer in its own right with a plant, uh, underground mine head frame, and a significant land package, as I mentioned. Uh, Alaska, people think, oh, it's the other side of the world. Well, it's only six hours' time difference. It's so far around the, the globe. Um, so it's actually a really good time zone overlap, much better than you know, eastern Canada or, or uh, New York, as an example. Uh, and so our morning is there afternoon, the day before. Terrific team in country. Uh, Alaska is in the top five jurisdictions in the world. Uh, WA is first, and Alaska I think is fourth from the Fraser Institute. We've had fantastic opportunities and experiences there. And as I mentioned, uh, last but not least, our Mount Carrington project. So I, I guess as an investor, you're probably thinking, well, this is day two, you've seen probably 20 odd presentations, you've probably got another 10 to go. How, how do you work through what's good and what's not so good? Now, obviously, I'm biased. I am a mining engineer. Um, you know, I'd encourage the investor, obviously, to listen, do your own research. It's not investment advice. Go and talk to the people at the booth. But look at the assets. And it's, not, it's, it's obviously people. You know, you can have the best assets in the world, but you haven't got good people. Um, but jurisdiction, uh, I think, is important. You know, there are places in the world where you can wake up in the morning and the government's done something to your asset that's out of your control. So we operate in three fantastic jurisdictions, Victoria, New South Wales and Alaska. Uh, they all speak English, even in Alaska, um, but also commodity-based. We, we think that the diversification is a de-risking uh, opportunity as well. We have a lot of gold, we have a lot of silver. Uh, in the base metals, we have a lot of zinc. Uh, and zinc for us in particular, given it's in our US asset, where the US government has declared zinc as a critical metal is a significant advantage for us uh, and that asset there. As I mentioned, English speaking. So we've got significant ground holdings. So that's another key asset is, is the ground that an explorer producer has, because therein lies the opportunities to find more of the same. As I mentioned, commodity split. So Jork resources, hopefully most, most listeners here are aware of that. So you combine the Jork resources in our Alaskan asset with that in New South Wales. You know, 800,000 ounces of gold in our own right, uh, 80 million ounces of silver which in gold equivalent terms is a million ounces of gold equivalent value, and 1.8 billion pounds of zinc. Um, if you were to apply those long range forecast prices to that, you get something of an in-ground value well over $5 billion US. So significant assets for us, great opportunity to now try and realise that, try and monetize some of that, try and get that into our share price and our market capitalisation for the benefit of our investors and our shareholders. Obviously, I'm a little bit biased. I won't ever be the last MD to stand in front of you and say that we're undervalued. Um, I'm also not naive enough to think that we'll ever get full value. Uh, but here are four truly independent valuations of the company and its individual assets. Probably the most important one there is Valmin. Valmin is the international recognised 
valuation of mineral properties. It's similar to Jork. And you can see the numbers at CSA Global, and this is all public domain information, by the way, so you can go and read for yourself. So you can see some of the significant values given to some of our assets. And our, and our unsatisfactory market cap of only 22 million. Now, as a, as a managing director with those assets and those people, and we're about to be a gold producer, therein is the frustration. You know, why is our share price so low? Why is our market cap so low? I know a lot of our shareholders are also frustrated, but I think therein also lies the opportunity to try and get some of that value of those assets that we do have into our share price. So that's, that's what gets me up every day, that's what motivates me, to try and get the story across clearly that even though we are a low share price, there is a valuation differential, and if we can get some of that into our share price, then I think um, you know, everyone would be well rewarded. That's my job, I haven't found the secret yet, um, but that's what we work on every day. A little bit of the capital structure, not, not too bad, a bit under 200 million shares on issue, tiny bit of debt, not bad cash, we did a uh, capital raising earlier in the year. Uh, small board, we, we, we're, I'm based out of Ballarat, um, I, you know, we don't have a secretary, um, so small team, which is good, so low g &A, so low overhead costs. And I think another comment I'd make for the investor is look at who else has put their money into the company. You know, don't, don't listen to me. We've got um, Crestcat Capital, Precious Metals Fund uh, out of Denver, the US, our largest shareholder. We've got two funds out of Switzerland, gold funds. We've got a private equity group out of New York. Um, we've got the Zijin Sprott JV out of Hong Kong. And we've got some high net worth and retail investors, as you would expect. So not a bad register mix. They've all done their homework and invested in the company. I'll move fairly quickly through, but Woods Point, as I mentioned, east of, east of Melbourne, um, high grade, narrow vein, nuggety, underground, uh, fantastic opportunity. The, that photo on the right is the gravity gold processing plant already in place. Head frame and winder already in place. Goes down 800 metres already in place, although it's flooded below 300 metres and we're working in the top third of the mine at the minute. You've heard a little bit about Victoria. It is going through a second renaissance. In a previous lifetime, I was the managing director of Castlemaine Goldfields. We ran the Ballarat uh, gold mine uh, back in around 2000. Gold, gold mining back then uh, was on the nose in Victoria. I think Victorians had lost connection between mining history and its, and its contribution today. But thanks to the success of Fosterville, uh, arguably one of the richest gold mines in the world, uh, has seen a renaissance. Where are we? Uh, we, we acquired it in August last year. We've been drilling since October. Um, despite pundits saying that the old timers got all of the uh, ounces out of uh, the mine, we found at least five areas just in the top 300 metres. Uh, and we've already started development and we'll be pouring gold bars in the next three months. And I think that's a really exciting time for the company and our shareholders. But equally important is the 660 square k's of land that we've got. Uh, it does take time for approvals, it is hilly country, um, but it's th the Morningstar gold mine itself sticks in a dike swarm. It's a, it's a diorite plug, um, cross cut by reefs, and there are many, many of these. So that's the Morningstar mine itself, 800,000 ounces at 26 grams a tonne. Not many of those mines around, and we're lucky enough to have that already with a shaft in place. Already with a processing plant, 80,000 tonne per annum. Lots of potential above nine level, which I'll touch on, and we're drilling the gap zone below nine level as we speak. High grade results, as I mentioned, they might be narrow, 0.5, one metre, um, but high grade, running a number of ounces per tonne. As a mining engineer, you know, the economics are that you spend your money moving tonnes, not moving ounces. You spend your money drilling and blasting and trucking those tonnes and processing those tonnes. So the more gold that's in those tonnes, the better, the fewer tonnes you have to move. Simple economics, um, that's why they do say grade is king, but that's the reason they say that, is that we don't have to move a lot of tonnes to get a lot of value out of those tonnes. We've identified four areas and we've been drilling. We've been drilling the Dickinson South area from surface. Um, we've been drilling Kenny's and McNally's from underground. And we're drilling this gap zone, a 200 metre vertical section that's never had any drilling uh, prior, or any substantial drilling prior to our acquisition. So in, in the upper areas, uh, and there's a lot of gold grades there, and I'm not going to read them all out, but it's just to try and demonstrate that it's just not just one or two drill holes that are giving us the 
the, the confidence. It's multiple continuous intersections at decent grades running one, two, three ounces a tonne, just in that area alone. In the middle section, Kenny's and McNally's, again, lots of continual, albeit relatively narrow, but high grade uh, intersections. And our mining method is suited to that. It's narrow vein underground air leg mining. And then the gap zone, a quirk of history, where above the, the gap zone, half a million ounces were produced historically. Below the gap zone, about 300,000 ounces. Quirk of history back uh, after World War II. And in the middle, little, little, little has been drilled. Our first drill hole of any decent uh, nature into the centre of that gap zone, 600 grams a tonne, albeit 0.4 of a metre. So a fantastic start to that drilling program. That drill's still going and will continue on for the next few months. So we're ready to go with five areas that we've identified. You know, we've got a plant ready to go. We've got 25 people on site. So one of the benefits for this story is that we sidestep long lead item ordering. We sidestep inflation risks. We sidestep uh, supply chain issues with COVID. We've already got the plant all ready to go. Great exploration potential, 660 square kilometres, sits in this dike swarm. So there are many examples and lots of past producing mines by the old timers. Um, we, we command at least 22 occurrences running over two ounces a tonne. One example and our primary target is the wallaby. A lookalike to Morning Star, the old timers got, got down to the water level, 100 metres, and then stopped. Uh, so we're going through the permitting to access that and we hope to be drilling that next year. Briefly then on Alaska, the geologists were very imaginative. It's called Red Mountain and you can see why it's a red mountain. Um, great, great part of the world south of Alaska. Significant jork resource. Now it's got a lot of silver, uh, zinc and gold, as I mentioned. Um, you know, great grades, over 500 grams a tonne silver equivalent. Significant land package, over 800 square kilometres. Um, we've got VMS, so vulcanogenic massive sulphide, so the polymetallic nature. But we've also got a very large gold anomaly uh, to the west called Last Chance. We've made many discoveries, including this Kiwi trend. Um, there's a, a photo of some of the rocks, and you can see some of the grades of some of that rock float uh, on the surface. So not just copper, um, but also silver, and in some places gold as well. This, this is an amazing geology, so it's not just VMS, but it sits in the Tintinna Gold Belt, which is home to Pogo, that may, most people may now have heard of, that uh, Northern Star acquired. Um, Fort Knox, most people have heard of, run by Kinross, and a 40 million ounce project uh, joint ventured with Barrick. Um, so a great endowment. We, we have a, a, a great discovery in this last chance. Uh, but we also have not just last chance, which is supported by many, many soils and rock chip samples, um, but also uh, an area that we staked earlier this year. So despite some pundits saying you can't do anything in Alaska in winter, uh, it's seasonal. I do remind people that Northern Australia is seasonal um, from a news flow point of view. Even Victoria is seasonal with cropping. So um, you, can, you can do work year round. We, we, we pegged this. You can see some of the surface uh, numbers, you know, 18 metres at nine grams. You can, you can read that for yourself. You don't come across that every day and that's been added to our portfolio. So again, a couple of reasons that you should think about looking at White Rock. Um, Exploration potential at Woods Point. We're about to become a gold producer. We're drilling. Uh, Red Mountain, not just zinc, but silver and gold. Uh, I haven't touched on Mount Carrington, our, our third asset. I encourage you to come and talk to me afterwards. I'm in booth seven. Um, it's, it's got uh, gold resources. It's got silver resources. It's on a mining lease. And we're being free carried by our joint venture partner, Thompson Resources. So again, it's a great exposure for a shareholder and investor. Um, it allows us to focus on Alaska and Victoria, uh, but it allows this asset to be progressed by another party. Again, uh, jurisdiction diversification, I encourage you to look at. Again, I'm not the last MD that will ever say we have an experienced board of management. Um, go and have a read of the CV, satisfy yourself. And look, with that, thanks ladies and gentlemen. We are on LinkedIn, we are on Twitter. Um, we have a website, uh, Booth 7, come and see me afterwards. Thank you. Thanks, Matt.